Not too okay, well, maybe we try mean. to limit the bloodshed for, you know, exotic uh, occasions. No, blood oh for the blood. Anyway, catacombs! <laughs> Uncharted territory! <laughs> But no, so yeah, they get down there, all the creepy shit's happening, they're starting to get weirded out, and then this, that's when they end up running into a, let's, I'm just saying the mole, cause I feel like if I mess that word up one more time, a mine is gonna come out of nowhere and just like beat me to death. <laughs> <laughs> so like, that's when they run into the, the, the mole, and basically, you know, you get stuck underground for a couple of years, you tend to lose a few marbles. <laughs> So he's all wigged out and crazy and, you know, he recognizes Pap and shit. And so, you know, they go about their way. They go deep into the tunnels. I don't know why they don't think it's weird that this dude is just like alive. They just roll with it. They're literally like, oh, okay, cool. Come on, let's go. Let's go find this treasure. And like, <laughs> no, no offense to anyone here. That's some white people. Cause <laughs> if I see him. Dude, he didn't even care years, that he found his friend. He was like, oh, what's up? How you doing? Like, what's good? Let's go get this treasure. Like, he didn't ask him how he's been. He didn't say, like, how's your mom? How are the pet rats? Like, nothing. He was just like, cool. I want my treasure. Get out of my face. And they just took off. They just went deeper and deeper to go and find the, uh, the philosopher's stone. And then they ended up coming up to the, this weird room that definitely looked like it was built by a cult. But, uh, yeah. How do I describe it? I gotta stop describing things. Well, I mean, it's yeah. like... How did uh, Alex describe it earlier? Didn't you say it was like, you were like, people who had clothes that were like not from here and up. Right. <laughs> people wearing robes. Right, and... so those guys, those guys we were talking about earlier. Thank you, Alex, for that wonderful Half description. We appreciate people. you. Very vivid. Very the what? Vivid. Half naked raggedy people. Yeah, there hey, you go. My friend. <laughs> this is why I keep you around. <laughs> no, you keep me around because I'm. I actually don't know why you keep me around. <laughs> to, oh no! To fetch gift cards for uh, uh, Kiddo, that's the reason. Whenever Kiddo needs uh, a gift card that I send them, you have to give it to them. All right, so um, Sierra said, "Gift card? Where's my gift card?" <laughs> gift card? I'm a gift card. All right, Sierra, go ahead and talk a little bit about Dante's Inferno, because I know you know a little bit about Dante, and you wanted to see the comparison of this movie with the Dante comparison. Didn't you have something about that? Okay, I'm good with that. All right. All right. This is is where you get, like, you had someone who studied Dante in college, and they like, let's try to make this, like, a little bit of a... you know, horror film. So anybody want to touch on the Dante uh, connection here? In the, well, the movie is based off the seven layers of hell, but wasn't Dante like nine circles of hell or something? Yes. Uh, basically, the the thing that is this this film is not, you know, it's like it's not accurate as far as lyrically, uh, literature wise, but it's just something to capture the imagination more or less. Um we caught I it really on. hope this movie is not accurate. Are you kidding me? That is wild. <laughs> we, can party. we can all go down to the catacombs and kick it. <laughs> hey, I'm all, hey, I'm all, down. Y'all, one of these days we're just going to have to get up and we go, I'm going to take y'all to Amsterdam as soon as this pandemic is over with and we're just going to have a good time and do stuff like this. And Because uh, there's some freaky we're stuff down, down there too. Down. And it's, uh, and frag, f- 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 fact, we'll just go down the red light district and get a couple of freaks. But the bottom line with this is, uh, yes, my people, my people, <laughs> freaks or it's here. red light district. No, did you see? Yeah, as far as um, here's my thing. I, I mean, like I said, this is a good story, right? Pretty good story. There's nothing wrong with it. The problem I have, the biggest issue is the technical side. But you had some little confused in questions. What's your biggest question that you had about this film that kind of drove you nuts a little bit? See if we can answer that tonight. It was well, a lot that like threw me off. <laughs> the biggest questions. Let's start with the biggest one. Who was that little bear? Is that a dog on your something? Is that a bear what? on your on your side of your arm there? Where do you get these cutest little outfits like you do? <laughs> Yeah, uh, it's BTS. Oh, is that BTS? <laughs> I recognize that. Yeah. Is it a fish? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it looks like a fish. It's 
a heart. It's a heart. <laughs> We're going with this. All right. So he's a, he's a cute fish. All right. So um, now you had some questions. What some questions you want to drive about this? You that kind of me? Why do they talk in riddles? Yeah, the riddles. She wants to know why they talked in riddles. It's the well, because they needed a They're translator character to spice it up. <laughs> I, 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 as soon as she like started speaking in riddles in the very front, I was like, "What? What are you talking about? What is this? No, wait, what? You just said that. What?" And then she went back to it, and I was like, "Because <laughs> yeah. every good RPG needs a good riddle. Like that's just how they do uh, stuff." Really? Exactly. Or like what? What was the the old oh, uh, back in the day in the eighties? They always had the Egyptian riddles, and I got so tired of them all the time because he had like uh, he he walks on four legs in the morning, he walks on two legs in the midday, and he walks on three legs in the evening. Uh, who are we talking about? Some guy that's, that's very a lot good at Oh no, uh, man, you're a baby. Right. You crawl. You walk upright when you're a man, and then you have a cane when you are old. What kind that of a leg? That's an old. Who is Egyptian that quick? That is an old Egyptian riddle. It's. Uh, well, I would have died. They ran that riddle to the ground to the point where I got tired of hearing it. Every time I heard that riddle, I knew the answer because they would. It was in every television plot there was, you know. <laughs> Because that's the only one they knew. It's like, you look at all, exactly. You look at all the 80s television shows. There was only like two scripts and they just passed it around to each television show. I'm not just changed it up a little bit. Just change it up. They just changed Magnum P.I. to Fonzie. (laughs) (laughs) The MacGyver and they just kept it pushing. Exactly. MacGyver. Uh, let's scratch it out. Oh, it's Matt Houston this week. All right. Uh, they my, had eight team. They had mash. They were just figuring it out. Exactly. They were just going. Right. You know, I love the one uh, where uh, Mr. T woke up from a dream and all his friends were dead. No, that was mash. I'm sorry. <laughs> so where are we? <laughs> <laughs> oh me. Oh uh, yeah, golly. Why are we coming? Are we still talking about technicals or? Uh... Okay, I got one technical brief. Because I'm going to say this, even though I'm the producer and I'm supposed to keep my mouth shut. All right. So um, this Spar storyline, I have really no problem with it. Except for, of course, I don't like Scarlet. She's a Mary Sue. I wish she, she got killed the first minute of the movie, but that's okay. True. That's, that's, that's <laughs> She should not have to buy that, like, at all. That was pure plot armor. Yeah, but because Wait. it's like, it's like, my biggest thing is, uh-huh. it's like, no, but the, the, the whole thing is, I, I've got no problem with the story. Is It's good. It's good writing. That's fine. I love that. My biggest thing, they should have never made this a found footage film. Because it's like, who in the heck has got the camera? And you got to think, who in the world is that cold that to watch their fan, friends get sucked up? <laughs> it really, and especially Benji. Is it, it's Benji, the one ca- with the camera. All right. So it really makes me think Benji's not a nice guy. <laughs> He's like, I mean, yeah, that's gonna be weird. <laughs> I mean, technically he went in to document the trip, right? So technically he wasn't there to go like watch everyone get effed up. He was there. Yeah, to, like, but any any normal okay, person. I mean, like, two things. Here's two reactions going to happen for the normal person. I'm just going to say you're going to drop the camera and run if you're smart. <laughs> Number two. You're going to help your friends out and drop the camera. My thing is... Yeah, that's, that's so true. Huh? Exactly. Yeah, because... He held on to that camera. He needs a job on it. Right. Or here, here, here's what the problem was. Is I believe they pitched a good idea for a film. They said this, 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 and this, and this. Even though there's a good film about a German underground... There's plenty of films you go on during this time about going underground tunnels and all this. And uh, some of them are really good and some are really bad. But the problem is... They got in this found footage trend, and I'm gonna blame Blair Witch Project because they thought, oh, that's where the scare is, is the whole found footage thing, but it doesn't work in every situation. And it really. No, who else would be in the catacombs, you know? Exactly. Well, the point is, is just not do found footage, just have cameras there. 
And then it like, yeah, and it works for paranormal activity. That's it. Everything exactly. Else it just does not work with this film. Like uh, there was a tornado one they did, which was really stupid because it was like, who in the world <laughs> has the cameras while you're getting it sucked up in the tornado? But, you know, th- th- if they didn't do this, this film would have been all right. I mean, but the found footage thing is just, it just kills me. Uh, that's the only beef I really have with it. And then of course, like Scarlet, I hated that character. But other than that, you know, it's alright. Are we sure? Are we sure that, uh, the shots that you're talking about aren't from the, uh, headlamps? Because they also had, uh, cameras in them. I, I do understand that, but they're not gonna be at that ra- ratio. Especially not with like the quality of the footage they were Damn, like, pulling out that technical information. Way to go. Exactly. And that's what that's all I'm trying to say. You yeah, know, it's but like at the same time we're talking about plot armor for Scarlet. Yeah. I mean, you can say the same exact thing for well, that. Well, I'm just saying it's plot like armor. it's just if you took that part out of it, you got a good film. I could have I could have enjoyed uh, you know, the film movie is to make it yeah. realistic and a lot of it. Well, the problem is, of course, your age group's found footage is new to you, but to me, I'm so sick of it. If I see another found footage film, it's like a, you know, it's like a new fetish. Come on, let's do something new. You know what I'm saying? It's like, baby, can you like wear some high heels today instead of just showing up with some sneakers? You know, that kind of thing. That's all I'm asking. It's like, find another way. Maybe, like, like, Alex, if Alex, heck, if, like Alex said, do the GoPro thing. Like strap the GoPros on your chest. I've been okay that with would it. That super accurate for Exactly. Nowadays, yeah. And shoot it with just GoPro. And they've already done films like that. What do you think, Sierra? Okay, so from what I'm picking up with y'all, GoPro is like a sports camera. <laughs> nice. Awesome. <laughs> So, you can yeah. say that, yes. <laughs> right. They've already shot films with GoPro. And it's like they all should have had GoPros and they should have said they were switching back and forth with GoPros. That would have been believable. Huh? So 2014. Oh. Was GoPro, GoPros made then? Yeah, they had them. Oh. They've been yeah. around for a bit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They've been around since, like, I want to say at least. 2019 yeah. or not like 2009 2010 yeah it's like oh yeah they were rocking last year oh yeah and it would cons- I consider doing like heck I think it was 2015 when I was gonna cause when I was working with um a couple of you know we were gonna do a GoPro thing with the whole going to like climbing mountains and that kind of thing and and do that and I remember looking into it until, you know, like their moms were like, no, no, you ain't going, we ain't going to do that. And I'm like, okay, whatever. <laughs> yeah, um, I forget people need their parents. Yeah. To to well, you know, that's what I'm saying. They're like, they're all about like keeping their p- kids alive. That what's, that kind of sucks. You know, like I'm thinking, you know, get hurt. It's a valuable lesson. Yeah, exactly. You know, come yeah. on, you know, so, so she's flattened out on the ground. She'll learn like, next time not to do that again. Right. You know, that's a fall next time. Yeah. You know. All right. All right. Where where are we at? Yeah, so we could, so anybody want to touch on technical, like music? I don't remember yeah. much of the music. Uh... I will say, uh, a lot of their scares, a lot of uh, movies nowadays will use like jump scares and like a sound effect that you obviously goes with it to uh, add to the jump scare. Well, one of, a, lot, a lot of the scares that they did, like when Benji was going down the hole uh, after everybody, and instead of like a jump scare, they have that lady walk behind him without any noise. I love those kind of scares, like the ones that aren't like, whoa, you scared me. Right, or, yeah. Jump scares are way, way, way like yeah. Oh, yeah. I love the subtlety and, or, I mean, that one wasn't as subtle as some of that you'll see in other movies, but 
I love the the difference in effect that they used for the scares compared to. So, how believable do you guys think that these characters were for a horror movie? Like, how good do you think their acting was? Uh, I mean, it wasn't bad by any means. Like, let's start with let's start with Scarlet, okay? Like, let's no. isolate this character as a believable human and put her in these catacombs. Do you think that this is how she would have reacted knowing full well that, I mean, this is what she was signing up to do? Um, I, I think she had more of an adventure of mind where it's like, you know, I'm expecting obviously what's going to go completely south. I don't think she was expecting what she got. And she was just weighing over her head. Right. So, yeah, I, I think, mean, she handled it well. Ish. Yeah. It too well for my line of thinking. Yeah. Like, even if you Let's are. Let's talk about her friend, the guy who was there to be translating. Like, the entire time uh, as they were entering, he was like super adamant about not wanting to be there and not wanting to take part but it's like dude if you came all the way out there how did you not think she was going to pressure you into this and then as soon as he was like past the point of no return he looked like he was like so down and so into it it just it seemed like he might have been a little shifty on the character you don't really have a choice like you in there I know, but like, I feel like someone would be, you know, bitching and moaning about it a little more instead of like, all right, guys, catacombs. Okay, well, at that point, you got to look at people like me. Like, every time you guys want to go do something stupid, and I'm like, no, let's not do this, let's not do this, come back, don't happen. And then suddenly you guys drag me into some stupid shit, and I'm like, holding a cop over a balcony asking you guys to ride or some stupid shit. It's just like, okay, well, I'm in the shit now, might as well get through it. Yeah, like, like what you did. Still gonna tell us that we dumbasses, though. Yeah, yeah but, but, well, but like, like when you dragged him into doing this, this, this review tonight, you were like bringing him over here, and you <laughs> wear him <you> down. <laughs> <laughs> I might, I might have a little bit of a controlling complex. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. Sierra, Sierra, and I say this about this, like the it, when someone talks you into something, what's your reaction? They say, Sierra, let's go to the catacombs. Let's go to the catacombs together. We're going to go to some okay. catacombs. Honestly, this is my thought. This is my thought process. If someone comes up to me and be like, look, we're going on the ground. We don't know if we're going to be out alive. I'm going to be like, okay, am I going to die in one motion? If they say yes, then I'll go. If they say no, I'm not going. Am I going to die quick? Yes. Wow. So you're literally like, man, all right, if we're going to die quick, let's let's do this. Let's do it. Let's go. Oh my I'm God. Let's do it. This is how, how uh, to be honest, this is, this is how I do it. Hey, Sierra, I got some BTS stuff you don't got. I'll meet you down there. there you go. <laughs> I'm telling you. It don't matter what you offering me. It don't matter how much money, how much treasure I could have. Not doing it. I ain't going down there. The only way y'all could get me to go down there is if Lucas was just like just ran straight down there. Because then I, I mean, gotta go get it. I have been needing a new Damian Wayne Robin cosplay. So, bro, Let's go. <laughs> Lucas, Let's go. I. I value our our uh, friendship. Guys, if I have a so kid, they can't hurt me. Us part. <laughs> <laughs> Who told you that? Like, I value you our, that kid? You can hell do that to him. But if you <laughs> ran into the catacombs, I'm not coming after you. I got you. I kind of got to come after Bad. you. I got Sierra on my team. Let's go. I'll go oh where I'm good. And everybody knows I'll go where Sierra goes. That's <laughs> I, Lucas, you single handedly okay. killed four out of the five people in the group. How does that make you feel? Dude, we're gonna get some hot footage, let me tell you that right now. It's gonna be awesome. Oh well if we're getting footage now I have to go. Ah, uh, see you now, Alex is on board. Full <laughs> team, let's go. 
That's too late. Now. I really don't want it's too to late. You had your chance. You had your chance. You were like, no, I ain't gonna go. I even offered you well, BTS yeah, stuff. Content. Yeah. I'll do anything for content. <laughs> As the kids used even to die. say, a do it for the vine. Okay. I yeah. ain't gonna do it. <laughs> I'm a millennial. No, I'm okay, just saying. Right, guys, let's circle back around. Yeah. Obviously, yeah. Webb and Alex recommended this movie. Uh, so give me a rating. Why? Who would you recommend this to? Who are you like, dude? You should watch this movie. Any of my friends that watch it. I'd recommend it to people that aren't looking at the finer details of. Movies and are just kind of there to chill to a horror movie. I guess you don't chill to a horror movie, uh, but mm-hmm. kind of just. Yeah, I guess. Um, There's a whole channel called but, Chiller. That's nothing but horror movies. You chill to some horror movies. Chiller. Fair enough. Y'all, chill. Um, I don't. About you, what about you, Sierra? Who would you recommend it to? People not scared of horror movies. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's a good one. That's a good recommendation. I know. You know when I told her that we we're gonna watch this, what was your reaction? What? What was your reaction to? First, it was like, I right, okay, I'll watch it. And then I started watching. No, you I was didn't. Like, you were like, this is a horror like, film. <laughs> no, because I didn't know this was a horror film until I started watching it. And I was like, tell whoever chose this movie that I'm fighting them on site. <laughs> Oh, there you go, Webb. He's so down. He's down to fight anyone. He'll fight himself. Kick your dog. My own ass. I don't care. Oh, she, she, I wouldn't want to fight her. <laughs> I don't want to fight anybody. I'm okay. hey, the best thing to do, I will let me tell you what you got to do. You got to get some BTS stuff. You throw it that way and she'll run after it. And then that way you can get her when she's preoccupied. But other than that. But don't throw it too hard because if a scratch does get on it, my inner theory comes out. We'll see. That's just We'll get tranquilizer dark. All right. See, I always got my back. Lucas, uh, who would you recommend this to? I'm going to put you on the spot. I would recommend this to people who like the National Treasure movies, but want to see people get, like, disassembled. (laughs) Disassembled. Yeah. I I think that's, like, the best way I can put that. All right. All right. Since, Nate, since you picked this film, I mean, who who would you go with? I mean, you say, who would you, like, introduce this to besides, like, your brothers or your nephews or family? What about people that you would like post about who would you target to watch this film pretty much anyone that's looking for a new horror movie to watch like there are those people that sit there and they scroll through everything trying to find something to watch and like i'm not saying watch it because you're bored but it will hold your attention you will stay entertained for a bit I, i feel like that also ties in with how alex said earlier it's a different like not a different genre, but there's so many jump scare movies yeah. and so many similar horror movies, you know. Mm-hmm. I can't complain about something. <laughs> oh, no. Yes, by all means. <laughs> okay. So, Scarlett had all these people helping her, right? And they, it was like after the scene that that one dude gets bit, and she's like, oh my god, I got the wrong stone. And she goes all the way back gets the proper stone and comes back alive yeah I know and I like how the guy who was literally dying was like hold on let me wait to die until you're like here right he I her her she what was awful ass that girl was gone yeah like she should have definitely should have died but she was rolling yeah I, I'll be honest with y'all I was hoping she's gonna get killed I mean, I hated oh, that character so much. Oh my god, me too. I was so ready. I was like, yeah. Oh god, I was like, I hope she dies, because I'm like, she deserves it. 
I mean, <laughs> I mean, we're kind of the worst. I hate saying I, that. I, I, no, we're the worst. We got a point. Yeah. yeah, because uh, she realizes that she got the wrong stone, and she goes and returns it. But after she looks at herself in the mirror, she's like, "Okay, I'm gonna run back," and she doesn't have a, another stone. Yeah. So, where's the stone she at? Her head 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 me with what was the correct stone that she used to heal him? I thought she had to put the stone back. She, she, had, had, to to she had the magic in her the entire time or some sh- Some Disney. <laughs> <thing>. <laughs> she had the magic in her. They trust in pixie dust. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. That's a good one. I was like, <laughs> I don't know why I'm praising. It was literally that she found out she had the magic in her now. Yeah, like, exactly. But that's some, like, your boy is over there laying on the ground right. dying. You in the catacombs, and you put the stone back that was to heal him. And you just run off on faith, like it's in me now. I can do this. I'm gonna heal him. What do you got back? You like what put your hands on him. He just died. Like you saw yeah. his soul leave his body. I I know. That's the reason I hate this because that I hate that part because it reminds me of like the, the you know she's got the force healing power now. It's like okay, now you've done it. Like I'm wow. saying, that's the reason I can't stand that character. It's like now I she's got force healing. <laughs> <laughs> that is definitely one of my complaints about the movie. I will give you that. Yeah, but I mean, I mean, I mean, I'm not saying. I mean, it's got good setup, but you know what I I think happens? You get a good film like this, like someone writes a good story, and then some producer goes in and ruins it. And it I think that's what happened with this film. It was like they said, "Oh, for you to do this, you got to be found footage. For you to do this, you got to have you got to have a Daisy Ridley character in there." And it's like. No, no, no. Because <laughs> those things, those elements, you took those things out. This film would have been fun. It'd been, it, it, it would have been one of my favorite. I, I've seen, now, uh, granted, there's a lot, of, like I said, you can go to, because after Hostel came out, how many saw Hostel? Any horror fans here? All right. We're going we're gonna to have to talk, Nate. We're going to have to talk, because I love horror films. You've touched on my thing. And it's like, there's a lot of underground tunnel films that came out this time. Like I said, there's one about Germany. There's one where you, uh, where they, you know, like this that was going on. And, you know, they have bad things happen to them. Uh, and the, granted though, this is one that kind of like, like I said, only weakness was like, I think some distributors got in there and just like, cause this was a big universal release this. This mm-hmm. wasn't like a, a Inner Sanctum and all them other places like Shriek and all them people that like independent ones that come out, but they end up being pretty good because nobody's touching them. You know, it's like they only mm-hmm. put the actors only making like ten thousand dollars a pop or something like that. This film made mm-hmm. like twenty million dollars worldwide, and that was a profit. And it was released by Universal, so you had a lot of elements, and I think that's what kind of ruined it. That it wasn't that independent on the edge horror film you know what I'm saying it's like kind of like the same thing that happened with Justice League people exactly. came up screwed it up and it was just oh yeah even though Black Pink is in that that was probably the best decision to keep back Black Pink in there what in the uh, the flash scene when yeah, the she, they were on the TV <laughs> who's your daddy <laughs> <laughs>